Today we're doing a repair on a Ford Focus 2002 uh, 2-litre. It's got the 4F27E transmission in it. Um, it's been to the Ford dealer apparently and they replaced the solenoid. Um, he's lost reverse or um, when, when you rev it a little bit it'll thump really hard into reverse. So I'm just going to put the scanner on and just see if we get any fault codes. Um, sometimes a solenoid B can be um, faulty. It, um, solenoid B I think only comes on in, in reverse. Um, I'll just confirm that. I'll go and have a look on the chart and then we'll put it on the scanner and just see if we can get any fault codes. Now, if we don't get any fault codes on it, um, it's more than likely the reverse clutch or the low and reverse clutch. You can see there um, manual first is actually fine so uh, I'm suspecting it may be the reverse clutch um, the pistons probably popped out or, or something along those lines or some mechanical problem but we, before we do that we're just going to put the scanner on it and just see if we get any codes uh, from this diagram you can see that the uh, shift solenoids um, B shift B is only on in reverse so if it's not that um, oh, we've actually got manual first um, but we're just going to confirm it anyway um, yeah more than likely it's that shift B is playing up um, I believe the, the Ford dealer re replaced the uh, pressure controlled solenoid um, but uh, it didn't fix anything with regards to the reverse. Um, there's no reverse if you if you rev it up a bit and just allow it to sort of engage you might have to do it a few times it'll actually thump really hard um, into reverse. Okay we're on our little test track here where we can see in front of us and behind us for probably two or three k's so um, safe to to test drive it but just to show you um, I'm just going to put it into reverse and there's nothing there and you'll hear the thump when I rev it up to about 2,000 revs oh probably not even and again if we I don't know if you can hear that real bad thump going into reverse so it can either be that solenoid or can be a problem with uh, one of those or both of those clutch packs. Now the Ford dealers just replaced the pressure controlled solenoid and there's been no improvement so the owners brought it to us to try and fix it. Okay, we're just going to suck out the oil out of the transmission with a vacuum pump through the, the filler tube there. Now this pan's been off uh, just recently by the dealer. You can see they've elastic the pan on um, onto the transmission instead of putting a gasket on there. Um, what I've also done is I've put all these really strong neodymium magnets on the pan um, when I've taken it for a test run just to get an indication of how much metal's floating around in there. So we'll just take the pan off now and have a look uh, what's going on inside. I've taken the um, all the bolts out of the pan but the pan's stuck on pretty fast. If you try and get pried off with a screwdriver you'll end up uh, bending that pan rail and then uh, it won't be able to seal properly. So what you got to do is you got to run around with a Stanley knife or a really thin blade and cut that elastic all the way around or as as far around as you can. On this one it'll be sort of more around the sides and the front. The back's a little bit hard to access um, but hopefully if we get that off enough it'll be able to just break that seal at the back of the transmission. Anyway, we'll go ahead and do that and hopefully get the pan off easily. It's taken about 10 minutes of slowly um, 
cutting that bead of celastic and uh, prying it and then cutting and prying and it's finally just come away now. But you've got to be patient and just do it slowly and carefully otherwise you'll bend this pan pretty easily. A little bit hard to see on a black pan but uh, there is a fair bit of fine metal on there and you can see those little round bits that's where the magnets are on the under underside so it has collected a fair bit of fine metal even from a short uh, road trip so anyway okay that's slamming in reverse um, not remedied with um, solenoids so we're not getting a solenoid uh, fault code so we've pulled the transmission out um, as you can see um, these transmissions in the Fords are called the F, a 4F27Es and in the Mazdas they call them the FN4AELs it's basically the same transmission so anyway um, we're also going to take off this drive plate and just have a look behind whether the rear main seal's leaking a bit um, important to make sure you've um, got the jacks um, safely um, installed and chopped up the wheel so it doesn't roll anywhere um, common sense I, I can't really go through um, the details of, of the safety but um, as you'd be aware it can be very dangerous if it comes off um, especially if you're levering things or bumping things so anyway we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the transmission apart here's the transmission we're going to um, oh we've just washed it off plugged it up washed it off and uh, given it a, a paint job and uh, after when we finish the reconditioning process we'll uh, just give it a touch up with the paint if there's any scratches or anything on it we've just whizzed off the 10 mil bolts off the end cover there and with a soft hammer we've just uh, hit along these two tangs here not to damage anything um, just slowly on each side and uh, that end it covers come off now I've just loosened the, the little anchor bolt uh, for the 2-4 band you can see it in there and removed the, the reverse clutch and inside there is the 3-4 clutch so what I'm doing I'm actually showing you um, what portion of the transmission you can actually pull out without removing it from the vehicle um, so if you have a, a problem with any of these clutch packs um, it is possible to actually um, just work from the side of the car without removing the transmission of course the torque converter and everything will still be in the vehicle um, but we'll just see I'll just show you how far we can go along um, and what can be repaired if uh, if if it's suitable to to repair without taking the transmission out and off that circlip there off the rear uh, or the reverse clutch and this clutch pack that spins around in there that's actually the 3-4 clutch so we'll just whiz that out just being careful to just place everything um, I was just going to check the the diaphragm spring in these uh, in the reverse clutch is known to break um, on the 3-4 clutch um, you can see that there's just a big spring that's under this plate here you need to get a press to remove that one um, actually it, it actually appears that the uh, I don't know if you can see that but the circlips popped out um, on the reverse clutch you can see that the pistons I don't know if you can see that there's less of a gap here than there is on the opposite side so it's actually cocked to one side so it looks like that that may even be the problem with this um, and that's what's caused that to uh, to give that thump in reverse um, or, or get stuck in reverse 
Anyway, we're just going to go through and we'll just, I'll put the camera down and we'll open up the 3-4 clutch and have a peek in there. Taking the clutch pack, uh, clutches out of the reverse clutch and you can see um, it's not too bad. The, the clutches, I've got to measure them with the verniers to see if they're worn. Um, but the 3-4 clutch, it's actually, um, the clutch plates have worn, worn out and you can see the hard spots. See so those black marks in there? They're, they're hard spots from burning. Um, this piston's all in place. Um, you can do a, a put a little bit of air in there. Um, careful not to pop it right out, and just view if there are any air bubbles there. It means the seal's um, leaking a little bit. But this one here, I don't know why that circle is popped out. Um, usually that diaphragm breaks here where these little notches are. Um, that's a weak point. In this case it looks like the weak point was the groove where that um, circlip sits. So it's popped out. So whether that circlip's worn out or the groove that holds that circlip so I haven't taken that off and you can see I can just sort of almost pull it out by hand. It's a very thin circlip as well so it's probably flexed and just popped out for some reason there. And we'll just take that pretty full band out. Just as you go along, just um, you can disassemble um, the components and as you inspect them just put it all back together and just go step by step and lay it out in order that way it'll be less confusing for you especially if you haven't got a shop manual or something like that um, also note that these Torrington bearings um, you can't sometimes you, uh, it may appear that you can put them in the wrong way make sure you don't put them in the wrong way as well um, so just take a note of that as well anyway in here I'll just grab the torch. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a circlip just in there, and you just lever that out, and then this this whole um, planetary assembly will come out. Um, behind that planetary assembly is the the low and reverse clutch, and then you've got the forward one, but we have to actually take it out the other way shot of the, um, the hot spot on that steel clutch plate there. You can see there and on the other side. So it has been working quite hard, um, hard enough to, to make this metal probably get that hot that um, it's left a colouring there and that, that will be a hard spot there. continue um, just to show you how far you can get along without um, pulling the transmission out. So we're just going to remove this circlip in there and pull that planetary out. There I've got this slightly bent screwdriver that I use quite often and we've got a, a medium sized one and a small one. It just makes getting circlips out a lot easier. You just bend that out in the in the vise like that. Um, so we've pulled that circlip out. Just got to put the camera down. I've a bit hard to pull out with one hand. There we go. I've taken the circlip off the planetary. That's off the low and reverse um, clutch plate. So I've taken off the the circlip off the planetary planetary gear, and that's that's it there. And now we've got the annulus, which is the bit that runs around on these bits. It's still a bit hard to pull out. Just pull that sun gear out, which is that small gear that runs in there. The uh, low and reverse, you can see how many clutch plates are in there. Um, it's important to note that this dished, um, it's like a cushion spring. Um, you can't put it back either way. Um, if you put it the, the wrong way, it won't work properly. So just take a note 
you can see how it's dished to one side uh, make sure it's it's on the, the proper way otherwise um, you'll get into strife down the track anyway that's basically all you can remove and re repair without pulling the transmission out I'll go ahead now and take the pump out and um, take the rest of it out um, on the other side you've basically got the, the forward clutch um, and the pump Now on the pump side you'll notice um, if you look closely when you take the bolts out there'll be a thread in the pump and they'll be on two opposite sides so you can actually pull the pump out with a slide hammer so you just find um, the bolt that fits in there um, you can see that that's just a bolt that I found and you can see that that's the pump bolt and you can see that one goes right through into the case right through bit hard to see um, but you'll see there's two threads in there one goes into the into the casing and one just goes into this pump here just so you can remove it um, with a slide hammer so it's just a matter of finding the right bolt um, they're all metric and just not left-handed so <laughs> a little bit difficult there we go and I'll just put the slide hammer on that and just alternate um, knock it out pull it try and pull it out evenly you can see it's got that attachment that just slides over the top of the bolt head and then you can just um, whoop, slide it with this big weight that just slides along like so and just pull it out slowly so I'll go ahead and do that uh, a little bit hard to film and and work with one arm by sliding um, using the slide hammer on on it alternate alternating sides um, it came out quite easily so you can see pumps just popped out And there it is, there's the forward clutch. Um, I haven't pulled it apart, but it's come out with the pump there. Um, the rest of the transmission, you've got the, uh, well, the differential part of it here. And this middle part in here, um, you actually need to pull, pull the um, housing right apart here. Pull that half off um, to be able to get it out so i just basically what i wanted to do i'm not going to go into the details of reconditioning it um, it's a matter of going through step by step and um, putting a, a seal kit through it um, replacing all the clutch plates that are burnt out and the friction clutch plates that have uh, worn out um, and the seals um, oh there's also rings involved um, solenoids got to take the pan off um, we still haven't done that also just um, you can see that one there that um, the speed sensor on that on top of the transmission um, yeah remove them before you try and pull it apart as well um, or you might do damage to them but anyway I hope that um, help someone you can see that you can it is possible to do uh, probably about half of the transmission without actually removing it from the vehicle um, if you've got a torque converter problem um, or something along those lines then uh, you've got to actually take it out but we're doing a full recondition on this so um, uh, thank you for watching <laughs>